Okay, I'm so pleased and so excited to, to talk to this uh, young man. He is, um, he's a part of royalty, but the fact is this man is a legend in his own right. He is the son of Bill Moss Sr., the brother of Jay Moss, and also cousin to the Clark sisters. I'm so pleased to introduce Mr. Bill Moss Jr. Good morning or good afternoon to you, sir. Giant killer. <laughs> I'm so What's excited. Up, man? You got I'm good. When they said I was speaking to you, I was so excited, man. I was so excited because yeah. um, I, I know the history. Uh, yeah. I know the history of uh, not just obviously the classes, but you uh, and your brother and 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 you guys. You know, if it wasn't for you guys, I don't think I would be doing what I'd be doing today in regards to production. So oh man, that's humble. That's humble. Great. Humble. So humble to hear that, and thank you for your support and the love that you show, man. We know we can we can sense that it's coming from a genuine place. Oh, we, we, you know, we give God thanks. Now, one of the reasons why we're talking is because you're about to drop a brand new album called His Majesty. And uh, it's been a while. Um, why has it been so long for you to drop an album? You know, um, I'm very timing oriented. Um, the industry operates on one track, but I choose to not just go full fledged in the industry because um, I have uh, really um, spent a lot of time in my commitment to being a church music director and fine arts director. You know, these these are some of the newer terms that they use uh, as opposed to minister of music because it has grown to that degree. Um, but yeah, you know, it's been my commitment for the last, uh, you know, 10, 11 years. I did do a project from out of our church, but um, just, you know, timing oriented and I'm getting back in the game and going to try some new things out this time because some new doors have opened. And that way, I think with me, God has always opened doors seasonally. And when, when that season comes around, I know what it is. And I jump back in there and get out there and, and get in front of an audience that he has for me. And that way, you know, so it's, it's always fun, you know, you know meeting new people. Um, you know, the UK, last year coming to the UK was the first experience for me we had gone over to Europe a few times with my dad when he brought his Bill Moss singers over to Europe. We did an extensive tour with him and I played piano for his, and they were singing Negro spirituals. They weren't even singing the songs that he wrote, but uh, I was really surprised at how much of an appreciation Europeans had for Negro spirituals. But uh, yeah, behind the scenes, you know, you keep doing that kind of work and you stay busy, you know? So you don't have to necessarily be putting records out uh, to stay busy and I kind of embrace that behind the scenes. And so now we're back out here on the front on the front stage again, getting ready to do some new stuff. So the album is called His Majesty. Um, you've you've got two songs, uh, Brand New Day and Testimony of Praise that have been released. Um, what what can we expect from the album? I mean, um, we did speak about um, uh, testimony of praise being sort of like a, a real kojiki sounding song what, what else yeah. can we expect from the album what, good question good question well see my my aunt dr maddie moss clark she was the one responsible for exposing me to big choir sound mm -hmm. uh she's national music department president for the churches of god in christ for many years and she took me under her wing when she took her leave of absence and then i got a chance to get some training and get exposure and become her, her second musician. And so I sat back and took all of that in and I, I developed a huge love for the big choir sound, you know, bringing, we in the Koja conventions, we had over 500 voices sometimes at a time. Um, so God opened the door and they made me, and I'm in the Baptist church now, they made me the state music president of what we call the BM and E, Baptist Missionary Educational Convention. Um, and I took that choir, the first thing I did was built the numbers up. So we had 150 voices in maybe six or eight months. And so I said, yeah, this choir is a choir that I can record because I've I passed me the mantle mm -hmm. to keep the choir sound going. Nobody's really doing it. We, got, we have a few out here doing it on some scales, but the big open choir sound, that's gone amiss. And so uh, yeah, that's where the inspiration came from. And so on that project, you can expect to hear 
just a good open flow of big choir singing, some traditional, some newly written stuff. Kevin Baum wrote a really nice anthem uh, song on there. David Curry from the Mississippi Mads wrote um, Just Another Day. And so, yeah, man, it's, it's, it's a great project. You know, that, uh, your, that your Kojic sound has really spilled over into the UK. You know, we have people like uh, Patrick George and the Upmass Choir, who was actually trained under your, your aunt as well. So they're oh, sort wow. of holding the banner up in the UK. Uh, looking forward to the album. Also, the, the track also features your brother, uh, Jamos, on there. What was it like working with him? On that. Yeah, yeah, we know this is the second time since in, in recent years uh, that we've come together to do some singing uh, on the on my second project, Songbook of Praise and Worship. We had Your Will, in which Jay came in and did a really nice jazz gospel piece with me that I wrote, um, and he did a really nice uh, uh, rendition of a jazzy kind of a guy. And this is, it works so well, and then you're here in the United States, and he said, "Well, let's do it again." And I'm gonna just give you like 40, 36 seconds, I think is all it was on the back end of that song. <laughs> and it was, and he was like, that's all I get, you get the whole song. <laughs> but I, but because his, his gift is so tremendous, um, I knew that he would nail it. And yeah, he comes up right on the end of the song and gives you uh, that J Moss, very churchy, very Kojiki, all of that stuff that's in us in 36, 38 seconds, man. So captivating that was really, really cool. Yeah, he, he, he did his thing on that. Now, mm -hmm. the album is going to be out soon. What, what's the overall message of the album? Yeah, you know, it's titled His Majesty. Um, and because, you know, like I said, my writing is seasonal, I was in a place of, of you know, God has really, really been good um, right here in Detroit at, within my home with my family, my wife, our kids. And and then I'm starting to see as we get older how precious life really is. And so I wrote a song called His Majesty. And that song is just about when we do get to the other side, kind of a song, um, how we want to spend those years with him, His Majesty. Um, and then we have uh, another song that I revamped, my father wrote years ago in the 70s, Someday We'll, we'll Meet. It's a really upbeat very churchy, upbeat song. And there's a lady, old school lady, that led that song. She has a voice like a tenor, but a very strong, growly kind of voice. She's doing a fantastic job on that Someday We'll Meet. So, you know, that kind of theme, um, not to be gloom about it, but, you know, just we should be looking forward to the day when we all get to heaven. And what a day of rejoicing it's going to be kind of a thing. And, um, yeah, that's what's there on that record. You can get a very strong sense of um, I know the outlook might look one way right now, or it may feel one way, but there's a better day coming ahead. And it doesn't always just mean it's going to be death. It, it just means that that's the way God works. You know, if you're going through right now, there's a light at the end of the tunnel if your hand is in his hand. Now, did you handle most of the production or did you outsource it to other uh, producers? I produced it. That's the thing that I've done on all three of my albums. This is my third project. So I produced it um, from some great musicians here. Got a lot of friends who played with me. Um, and, you know, it was good to have Kevin Bond as a uh, advisor and a writer. Um, Kevin just was amazing. He just said, hey, here's a song, take it. And just do what you want to do with it. And I didn't have to do anything but just teach it to him, you know. And um, yep, yeah, and did the same thing with David Curry as a writer. Yeah, so we had... We had some real good uh, uh, support just just from a friend base. Okay, so at the moment uh, there, there seems to be a lot of tension at the moment. It seems from our side uh, in America. Um, now, how do you think the church can help bridge the gap uh, of racial relations? Yeah, yeah, that's a really really good question, man. You know, people have to continue to have these these kind of conversations because it's one thing to be on a platform when the news, Fox, CNN, um, NS, NBC, when, you know, when they, MS, NBC, NBC, but when they put the, 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 uh, the stories on their platforms, everybody kind of wants to jump in and, and it sometimes feels like they just want the publicity. Um, and then they go away. You know, I got my shot and that was my opportunity. And we understand opportunities come and go and you don't, but it's important that uh, when 
we get off the TV screen and we continue to have the conversations and influence in our communities that we still have some work to do. Um, the George Ford Floyd thing was very unfortunate to happen. And I'm still, you know, bothered by it. Uh, but I also do accept the responsibility that we have some responsibilities in our communities that uh, when it comes to the authorities that we got to get better with. But uh, am I by any means, no means, saying that George Floyd uh, deserves to die, you know? So we got conversations on both sides of this, uh, this racial tension that we have to work together and get better with it because it's just not one source. Everybody has a role to play. Well, I mean, the thing is, it's like, you know, it <clears> seems <throat> like things are changing, then it happens again. And then it happens again, and then it happens again. Um, so, you know, you, you they talk. Church talks about talking about this, but what else needs to happen for this thing to really stop? Or, you know, yep, they have to continue to work uh, from the, within the police department. You know, changes have to happen from the inside out. You can't expect it to happen from the outside in. It won't get deep enough. Um, from the inside out, they have to work with police departments. They have to get different cultures, um, you know, taught about different cultures. You know, white uh, police officers have to be taught about black culture and, and understand that sometimes just be scream and start cussing and acting wild, we ain't gonna do nothing. But see, they don't know that. They're afraid and they want to get back home to their families. So I do get it. And so that's the piece that has to be worked in fine tune is that you have to understand the culture and the behavior from a psychological standpoint so that you can know how to deal with uh, when it becomes an extreme situation, but ne not necessarily a dire situation where somebody has to be killed. And then uh, as far as in our communities, again, we got to teach our young our black men, especially, you know, I was always taught respect the authority, you know, I've, I've been stopped by a few uh, white cops and I've always had a respectful response, even when I didn't think they were right. And so I get home, I usually get off. I don't get the ticket because of my respect and I get home to my family that they are the authority first. And a lot of times you'll, you'll get off. A lot of times they'll, they'll, they'll deal with you differently and the result won't end up in something very, very, uh, you know, very deadly or harmful because you have, you know, all to respect the authority. And so, but that, you know, again, I'm saying that that has to be something that has to have balance to it on both sides of the coin so that everybody can understand that we're responsible for each other. I heard a judge say recently here in Detroit uh, that she had a very wayward, uh, out of control guy in her courtroom. And he was a black guy, obviously. She was a black judge. And she told him, um, I'm not your enemy. Calm down and get it together. You can't use profanity in my courtroom. So he, he continued to do what he wanted to do. He, and, and so what she did was she said, I'm not your enemy. So what I'm going to do is close this case today and let you come back again once you simmer down. See, there, there's the responsibility to each other. So, and to make the long story short, he got himself together, came back the next with a different attitude. And so now he's he he he's not in jail. There you go. There it is. There you go. You know, also it's been a, a you know, 2020 has been a a corner turning year for the whole world. You know, um, it's been seven months of global lockdown. What has this period taught you as a person? I'm glad you asked that question because I, I, you know, I'm to a point now where I want to talk about my coronavirus experience that happened to me uh, in the last week of March and the first week of April for 14 days. Um, you know, we take things for granted. We really do. Um, we walk around like it, you know, because you're feeling good. Um, I'm one of those persons that are in good shape, you know, good health, thank God. Um, so you don't feel like you know you're going to get sick they're talking about this thing is very deadly but you're just walking around and you feel great then the next day you have muscle aches your temperature goes up 
you have a loss of smell, and you, then you find yourself coughing through the night all of a sudden. And then it gets worse each day. You think it's going to go away because it feels like the flu or maybe a sinus infection or allergic reaction. It stays. It stays. And it continues to get worse to the point where now you can't even get up from the bed to go to the bathroom without having a breathing attack or coughing spell together. That is what kills people. Um, if you have any heart condition, any underlying respiratory uh, condition, it's hard to fight something like that that goes down deep in your lungs and tries to take over. So it was two things. It was the grace of God that kept me. And, um, and then it was just being in good shape and being in good health and being able to fight back. So I literally was down 14 days, went to the doctor on the 10th day. Uh, she had me quarantined from my family for four days. And on that 14th day, it started to lift. 101.2 degree temperature fell to 99, and then 98 the next day, and then 97 the next day, and it stayed there. But um, then I had work to do. I had numbness, uh, not numbness, but blueness of my fingertips right here. Um, and obviously that's an indication that your lungs were not properly uh, transferring oxygen. Your body was struggling. Um, I had, irregular heartbeats. So I got out, start running. And I mean, I started running more. The more my heart had irregular, because I've never had anything like that before. And I knew that's what my body had taken a hit. And that went away. The more I ran, that went away. Um, I had loss of smell. You just have to let that come back on its own. But your diet is important and your will is probably right a, a, a second close runner up right behind your diet, you know. And man, it, I'm just grateful to still be here because we lost a lot of friends. We lost a lot of people. Uh, you mentioned the Kojic Church. The Kojic Church got hit tremendously, man, when death. So um, yeah, that's my testimony, man. And, and, and you're right. I'm glad that you asked because that song, Brand New Day, was written by a guy named Mark Stansberry out of the Tennessee area. And he sent me the lyrics and said, hey, Bill, I, I need you to do what you can do with this. I can't do anything. Like this song is very relevant and necessary. He sent me the lyrics and I got right on it. And I was able to really get this song going from an emotional standpoint because, you know, the pandemic was hidden and I felt the, uh, I felt the emotional pain, which sometimes inspires me to write. Um, and it doesn't have to be painful. It could be a good moment. It could be a, a moment of joy. And I'll write to, to those feelings. But uh, it was easy for me to get to, attached to it emotionally. And it's a great song. Uh, brand new day. Let's get started. We got to reach out, reaching out, man. Your your extent, you may have a longer reach than I, but who, whatever reach you have, touching a life is important. Wow, you know, uh, I'm just uh, wow. I'm mm -hmm. completely touched by that. You know, I'm, I'm just you know, really uh, grace of God, man. The grace of yeah. God. You know, we really thank, thank you. God that you're you're alive and you're able to bring us this this new album this new piece of work as well mm -hmm. you know, what 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 plans have you got you know after they open the borders you know? really yeah to get out here you know and and be on the assignment i think that's the way i look at it it's an assignment now let's get out here and do it you know um i you know i spent my years in school Sometimes I'd get my assignment in. Sometimes I wouldn't. Teachers say, William, you got your assignment today? I ain't got it. <laughs> <laughs> you going to stay behind. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Always kept me in trouble. But no, it, you know, it's important that we are, we, we see the importance of uh, being on our assignments that God has out here for us because there's a mission and there's always a, a plan for uh, us when it comes to being in the will of God. And if you if you see him opening doors or giving you an inspiration, do something to do something, do it because you'll decide why. He'll make it clear. See, you see, you're getting these messages, you're getting these social uh, these social uh, media messages, and people are telling you how much your songs blessed them while they were having their bout with cancer. I mean, this is the kind of stuff that people call me and tell me. I was lying on my sick bed. I had cancer. My mom died of cancer, and your song helped me get through. You don't take that kind of stuff lightly. You know, so there's somebody that Hezekiah Walker might not be able to reach, but Bill Moss can reach. Somebody Fred Hammond might not be able to reach, but Bill Moss can reach. But Bill Moss has to be willing to accept what 
his audience is, where his audience is, and be content with that. And God will do the fulfilling. Amen. Amen. Um, wow. Um, this has been an amazing uh, conversation. You know, I've been really been touched by, and it makes it makes the hearing of your album more and more important. You know, um, and I really pray that when people hear your album, that they will get that sense of of peace, but also that sense that God has a plan for them the same way he had a plan has a plan for you and you were able to overcome that i really pray that people hear that in your album uh, phil um just one more thing can you just um encourage somebody out there who may be going through uh what you went through yeah you know people are really on edge um a lot of people are afraid to talk about it it's amazing last sunday we had we we had our first drive up service at our church where people could come on the big screen and look on the big screen and park in the parking lot and after the service we you know a lot of people got out the car to fellowship because they just hadn't seen each other and uh you know people missed that uh experience you know this pandemic has some people in a very weird place in their homes because it's kept home who really don't have the space for everybody to be at home all at once people were working and in school and so now they have to figure out how to share TVs and share rooms all, all day long. You know, we take for granted the position it has put people in and cramped people's lifestyles. Not to even mention unemployment, people have lost jobs. Not to mention, uh, you know, uh, how people's finances have been impacted and, and marriages are now suffering. You know, so uh, we begin to talk in the parking lot. And when I, when I was the first one to say, yeah, guys, I'm good. To, I'm glad to see everybody because my coronavirus experience and everybody said, well, you had it? I said, oh, yeah, I had it too. And, and four out of the five people in that circle start talking about their experience. And it's, it's, it's important for us to be able to talk about it, to keep an awareness there because a lot of people are, are afraid because they think if you're in front of somebody and you say, I had the coronavirus, that, that you're going to infect them. Well, it's good to keep people of where and you know in terms of how we need to continue to be proactive about just being um, in front of things you know you don't have to be so separate uh mentally you know physically we got to provide some space but we can do more of this and how important it is to wipe off stuff and you know that awareness also helps keep that thing under control and when we talk about it freely we get it, we, we, we get it better. And it becomes more of the norm that we're living through. So we have to accept the norm. It's a temporary norm, I believe, but talking about it and reassuring one another, we've gotten through wor worse than this and we'll get through this. So that, that's my word of encouragement, man. Thank and people you. like yourself, keep doing what you're doing, man. You know, you ask great questions and I'm pretty sure this is something that you do consistently to help people uh, get the messages out there. You have influence and you can, you can touch thousands of lives where I can only touch maybe under that time. So I appreciate what you're asking and what you're doing as well. Bless you. Thank you. And uh, thank you um, for joining us. Just very quickly, how can, when's the album dropping uh, first? We are, uh, the album should be dropping. It's dropped in the United States. Uh, we released it a few weeks ago. So I'm sure my label has plans because we've launched a campaign right now to do radio. And this is like the third radio that I, that I interviewed that I've done for the UK. Um, so you can keep your ears open. Um, I know that the record has been sent out. They're going to start playing it, but it's available on all digital platforms. Fantastic. Bill Moss and the BMNE State Choir, um, His Majesty Project on all digital platforms, as well as the Bill Moss single, Brand New Day, for the social unrest period and things that we're going through. So I would love to get your support. Also, follow me on Facebook. My band page is 4BMJR, 4BM Junior. And uh, my Instagram is at 4BMJ. Love to hear from our followers and well-wishers and love to interact just see how the music is blessing you so don't hesitate to send me a little message or thumbs up that most definitely uh will, will definitely do that phil moss jr it has been uh, an amazing um, experience talking to you thank you so much for your time thank you so we much really, we really pray that the album really hits uh, where it needs to hit i'm looking forward to meeting you soon 
And thank you, thank you again. We praying for your success. Definitely, and you too. Thank you yes, so sir. much. Okay.